from the Parker Brothers and welcome back to another fishing video. Today you join me down the Linear Fisheries Complex and I'm actually fishing St John's and as you can tell I'm sat in my bivvy, it's absolutely peeing it down out there, it's absolutely horrendous. I managed to get the bivvy set up just before it started raining. I'm here with Luke, I'm here with Louis, one of the Parker Baits Ambassadors and also Luke which is um, a YouTube channel called the Caravan Carpers, it's him and his brother and you've probably seen them both on the channel before. But that's who I'm down with guys and I'm here for the next 48 hours and I'm going to try and bring you on my journey and um, hopefully, hopefully get some fish on the bank. Um, we've sort of set in the middle m main body of the lake or sort of in the gauzeway if you like where the two well, I, I like to say, I would like to think the fish, I've never fished this peg before, but the fish we use as a sort of going through to both sort of main bodies of the lake. So, fingers crossed, hopefully tonight they move through and then drop down, that's the theory behind that. Um, we were going to go on the back of the, the, the wind, or on the wind, sorry, should I say, on the wind, and um, we didn't. Um, we went around there, standed there for hours, got absolutely soaked. Um, watching out on the water just seeing if we could see anything we didn't see nothing and um, we noticed a guy in the middle was having fish off um, sort of he is fishing that uh, on that St John's peg you know sort of in front of me over to the left we, we can, you've got that whole margin to yourself it's a beautiful peg never been managed to get it in it myself um, but we're fishing sort of around the corner from that I'm in the middle I've got Louis up from me and then I've got Luke down from that so that is it guys and like I said hopefully hopefully we can get some fish on the bank and show you but for now I'm going to sort of chill out and um, I've been up since about four in the morning four in the morning this morning so I'll probably sound a little bit knackered um, but yeah soaked um, gonna just sit back now lock onto the water and hopefully um, let the fish show me what I need to do but yeah absolutely buzzing for it and um, what I will say is guys just before I start this video give us a thumbs up make sure you comment down below smash that subscribe button so you don't miss any videos going forward and like I said hopefully just hopefully I can bring you an absolute banger let's get it see you in a bit oh Ben you must be stupid you must be stupid <laughs> you were having a laugh mate Hey, look at him, he's done it. It's picked up the other line, isn't it? Do you want me to turn it off? Yeah, you turn it off. <laughs> yeah, well done, brother. Good man, smashed it. So, furthest left one, how long has that been out for, mate? About three minutes. <laughs> About three <laughs> minutes. <laughs> yes, mate. Well, hopefully, that means. The start of the session, a red letter session, mate, it'd be lovely, wouldn't it? A few thirties on the bank. Box common, yeah. Box common. <laughs> well done, right, well, I'm gonna put this down now and get, hopefully, you can get this one in. Go on, bruv. Ah, oh, absolutely gutted for Louis. So, after putting the camera down, I um, mean, he was pulling it in, pulling it in, and we, we realised it was a trailer. And it come right up, the, the, the hook was around the other lead, pulled it up, I'm shaking good good fish it was it was a good fish real like, big plate plates up here you know real, real scaly nice banger it was pulled it up and then then as, as he's done that his, his rigs come out and the fish has just paused there so I've sort of went down trying to sc scoop it didn't work it just went off so a bit gutted really but the fish are clearly out there feeding so I reckon that's been on there a while that because he's fishing on the bottom 
and that rig that was on the fish was on his egg so hmm, interesting <laughs> well not not long on since the last clip and it's like a different lake now Louis's got his rods back out he's getting funny liners out there I reckon he's definitely got fish on this spot out there <sighs> I just hope now with this spout on you can sort of get a few fish on the bank be lovely and then just sort of start the first day with a couple of fish you go into the rest of the session with plenty of confidence so wouldn't it be nice wouldn't it be nice I don't mean I don't care I mean I don't care if it's me I don't care if it's Louis I just don't hope between us we nick a few fish like we did before or have the one before but it'd be nice to have a few together look at it, it looks absolutely crazy out there it really does like I say completely different earlier it was smashing down the wind was ha hacking down that end um, very very aggressively and now it's sort of nearly flat calm out there nearly the other end the shallower bay there's one person fishing here this whole corner this whole corner is free there was two people fishing the the swims there on the, did we say this is the gauze way is that sort of the way of putting it or the, or the the channel the channel if you like the channel that runs through the middle there was two people the other side fishing the channel now they've gone so that should help now so if any fish do move through it's going to be my spots because Louis sort of fishing out this way so if anything does move through there I've got that sort of middle section of water locked on I've got two rods out in front of me and I've got one rod out so out towards the the pylons sort of over there but that's the update for now guys and um, quite a nice little update really again like I said a bit more confidence in both of us now that sort of a fish although it was a trailer it's a fish you know they're out there and it looked like they were feeding because that um, his hook link was right down by the lead in that, so very strange, very strange, but we shall see, we shall see. Early dinner for me and Louis, typical Ben dish, spicy rice warmed through and I picked these up for a pound, chicken bites, I've had them before, you've probably seen them on the channel, these are from Londis, just a quick one, I'm going to throw them in in a second and I'll probably let you, let you know what it looks like before I eat it, but yeah, basic bill, something quick to warm the cockles and fill the stomach and then to concentrate on the fishing. No chilli sauce. No problem. Yeah, I'm gonna have to put the camera down to squeeze this out. <laughs> Look at this boy. I don't know if you can see that, but looks and taste bang, I'm not gonna lie, I've had a little bit already. Didn't bring any chilli sauce with me today, so I've had to just squirt a bit of ketchup in there, but that'll do the job. So that's it, Louis took yeah. a leaf out of my book this yeah. evening, look at that. So barbecue chicken and rice, what you just normal rice, is it? Yeah. And it, on his posh, look at this. Mate. <laughs> posh. <laughs> <laughs> and at the moment, I'm getting absolutely nailed out there by my little birds. Great. Right, wow, it's definitely, definitely an early check out for me. Like I said earlier in the video, I've been up since around four o'clock, like a kid at Christmas, looking forward to getting up. He obviously had to get Louis, which is about sort of 20 minutes up the road. Then obviously we headed straight to Oxford. It's about an hour and a half away from me. Um, but yeah, like I said, I'm quite sort of looking forward to going into the night and just hopefully I can pick, pick a fish up. It would be absolutely lovely, just one fish would be um, beautiful although I sort of go on and sort of say you know a few would be nice you know just one fish would be absolutely lovely but there's plenty of time to do it um, loads of time on the clock still but um, like I said early night for me and I'll, cat I'll touch base with you in the morning and um, we'll go from there I'll see you in a bit oh. wow I've just woke up guys apologies just trying to make this as real as humanly possible you know trying to keep you 
in the loop of exactly what's happening and what I'm doing and how I'm doing it. Uh, nothing nothing through the night. I don't think Louis had anything. I can't see think anything in the slings or anything like that this morning. I literally just woke up. I had a lovely sleep. Beautiful sleep. Best sleep I've had in a long time, to be honest. I had a couple of times I got up in the night. Um, topped up for a little bit of bait about 2 o'clock. Um, and the wind's still hacking down one end. And um, there's people all along that end bay there. And I think, I bet you, there's people over to my right. But is a move on the cards today? I don't know. I don't know. I really don't. I'm going to sort of get up this morning, give it a couple of hours. Would I feel more confident in that main body of water? Yes, um, I definitely would. Obviously, I, only, I, I picked. I picked second. Louis, so Louis pulled first. He's fishing the main sort of section. Um, there was a couple of pegs around from that. I, paid, I pulled second, so I choose to go. I come up to Louis, so it's a nice to have a social with him. So I'm sort of next to Louis. And then round from that, again, it's like I said, Luke. Excuse me, he's also fishing that main body of water. Um, I have seen people catch, which was on the sort of side where that peg is, where I mentioned yesterday that you've got a peg on St John's, you can fish the whole margin to yourself, and there's like two pegs, and if you work together, you can actually fish them pegs, well, I know they're fishing zigs, because I can see them fishing zigs, they're probably fishing, got a bit over, it's got a bit over 150 yards, it's a big old chuck, they're casting pretty much on the boundary of their water, sort of on the end, but they were picking them up yesterday, and like I said, zigs are that, sort of moving on to the next thing really you know if it's not working with what you're doing if you're fishing on the bottom you're not catching well then it'd be silly not to have a little play about um I, when i do zigs on one four put all three rods on them i'm not one of these people that will just do um one rod um i think if you're going to do it you're better off going all in so i set all three rods up on zigs and that's what i probably do today i know louis got that in his head because we had a chat about it yesterday so yeah, that's the update for now. Coffee is definitely on the cards as well. Um, <laughs> I feel a little bit more awake now. I've had a chat with you guys and uh, I will catch up with you in a little bit. Probably in an hour or so when I'm a little bit more awake. <laughs> well, you can talk about Windy. We've just made a nice coffee, me and Louis. His, his spawn rod's just got pulled off the top of his bivvy over there. I've got my waders down there ready to go, even though they're absolutely caked in mud. <laughs> I don't know whether that looks good or not really to be honest I mean it's been pretty consistent it's turned a little bit that wind it's turned sort of more towards us we both just said that but the wind is still consistently consistently pushing and pushing and pushing down that end so and the next thing is, is a comment guys is what would you do in this scenario if you were here right now what would you do would you get on the wind if there was a peg available would you would you, or would you, <laughs> would you go, would you go home? <laughs> would you go home? Um, or would you go on the back of the wind, up the other end, and fish the back of it? I'm going to leave it at that because the videography is terrible because the wind is absolutely horrendous. <laughs> Mate, look at the state of the white socks on. If you can see that, it is just absolutely... It's like a mud bath in it. Everything's covered. Even my pots, look, he's in a new Parker Bates hook baits and absolutely covered. Look at him. And this one, covered. Right then guys, so what I've just tried doing is there, I've just done all the shots and I've made a zig. Now, a lot of people ask on the, on, on the channel, how do I fish my zigs? Um, what's the best way to fish a zigs now i'm not saying this is the best way this is just the way i fish and it's worked for me for many years now zigs have got a very very close place in my heart and um, particularly up here at linear fisheries because in the, any any given right at the right time you you can really sort of mop up here and have a good have, have a good few fish so my go-to zig so what have i done there so first thing i've initially done is i've got some double strength which is this bad boy here um you've probably seen the um zig line as well the quarter stuff but this is what something I swear by and I've used for years and years and years this is the 15 pound and I feel that you get that little bit um, stronger uh, mono leader material and if you do hook into something the last thing you want to do is if it goes into the weed is to have say nine ten pound line on and then it to snap on you or something to go wrong with a 15 pound I think that sort of just knocks them out on the head for me and you know that you're fishing you're running straight through to the fish you've got a strong line on your leader and you're also fishing strong line and potentially even a shock leader on your main 
main rods. So, let me very quickly touch on, so what I've done is I've pulled out sort of four foot of the double strength there and I've tied a tiny little loop on the end. And first thing I always do is before I make my zigs is I cut down a bit of um, zig foam there and what I do is I push my scissors into it so it makes it all mottled around the outside in something again a little bit different to other people. I trim the trim the um, sort of round edges off at the end and make it again all mottled top and bottom. So it almost sits like a deformed pellet. Anyway, this is a red one. It's probably about a centimetre wide and I'm fishing a size 8 hook which I touch on in a second. So first thing I've done is there, so I've got the leader, pulled the, malaria, uh, the leader material out, got it to the length you want, always add a bit more on so when you cut it down you know you're fishing. So if you're fishing say four and a hook and you mess up a knot and you cut it back down you know them fishing four and a half. So I always go a little bit more, you know X amount more so that gives me enough time to tie the knot on the end or the loop on the end just in case. And if I want to refine by inches, then I can, because I can take little inches off anyway. So I've done that, I've put the leader on, and what I've done is I've put it through the, 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 the front of the eye so, um, it, so it sits back on itself. Whipped it down about nine times, very easy setup. And what I try and do is I, I pinch my finger between the hook and the foam itself, and I try and get it as close as I can to the back of the eye as humanly possible, because you want this, you want your, your actual hook base sitting as far back as humanly possible. That, again, that's just how I fish. So I do that, I've whipped down, come up a couple of times, and then I put it straight back through the back of the eye. And then what that does is it puts that lovely natural kick in it. Now a lot of people just run the, run the zig like that, which is absolutely fine, but what I tend to do is I will fish um, a tiny little bit of shrink tube there, which is probably about half a centimetre, only small, and I pull that down, so as you've seen in the video, I've pushed it down all the way down, down the end. And what I tend to do with this, something a little bit different, I get it and I push it as far back as I can, so then what that does is it naturally pushes that zig up, and again, it sits even more uniform to the back of the hook, and I just feel that when the fish comes over, you just get a better, one, you get a better indication, not all the time, most of the time, and it just absolutely nails them, absolutely nails them, and I've had a lot of um, zig takes where it's not like fifth finicky bites, it's just an absolute bobbin hits the blank, off you go, baby, sort of thing. So, that, so that's that, I've put that on, and I've shrunk that down, and what I've done is I've tried to, to follow the, the kink of the eye. Obviously, this is a curved shank, um, this is a no, sorry. This is a wide gate X hook, which again I use for most of my um, both of the wide gates. It doesn't have B and X. I use both, um, and I just think it sits nice. And the hook's not too big that the fish are sort of coming over, and when they do see it, they go, "Yeah, I ain't having none of that, mate." Finally, finishing off, I just pull pull it through that steam to steam it all off beautiful and making sure that line is absolutely uniform. And as you can see there, it really is. There's no there's no twist bows in that whatsoever and all I've done is there I've put um, one of the Fox kickers on the end again I've used the quarter ones for years it just so happens I was in the shop and I picked these ones up I don't use one particular brand I use various different brands um, with my fishing and these just look quite nice a little bit of camouflage and a bit of flecking them a bit more bit more sort of um, really discreet on the bottom if you like but that there guys pretty much finishes my zig rig and hopefully that gives you a bit bit more of an insight of how I fish my zigs and in a, in a little bit more depth and the first sort of bit of zig stuff um, I've brought to the channel really and again like I said and I say it again this is such a, a devastating uh, rig in its own means if you've got the fish feeding or even just lurking around in the middle layers of the water you can pick them up you know and I think that's what the situation is up here the people that are catching the people that are picking them up it's people that are fishing zigs anyway I don't know what the, 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 the sounds like in this because my bivvy is blowing a hoolie out there and it's still absolutely smashing down it's just going to be interesting to get this zig out but like I said there it is guys that is my zigs and how I fish my own what I'm going to do is now that one's about four and a half foot I'm going to probably do one at say six and one at say seven and a half so I can then play of all the depths all three rods and then spread them out I'm fishing so you've got a major bowl then this bit in front of me gets squished and then it goes back out again it's almost like a big dumbbell if you like I'm in the middle of the dumbbell so in theory what I'm going to do is I'm going to spread them out so at the moment I'm, I'm only fishing light wraps I'm only fishing sort of just over nine and a half wraps so what I'll probably do is I'll do one just over ten one on the money of where I've been fishing just over nine and a half wraps and one just before nine so then what you'll find is then you've actually covered just over our rod lengths of in front of you and if I spray them and sort of go dun 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 sort of in front of me boom 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 but what I'm trying to put across is you've covered then a rod length or how many rod lengths you want to cover with that 
so if you fish in a smaller area if they do come through there's more chance you picking them up because you're covering more area than just fishing three on the spot they come straight through they miss all three of them because they're all bang on the same hopefully you got that i probably want the best way of putting it across but yeah that that's just how i'm sort of thinking and if there's any chance of me picking up a fish and i think that that is going to be the way i'm going to do it so there it is let's get these zigs made Right, well, hopefully the wind's not too bad, but what I opted to do in the end, I know I sort of said to you earlier I was going to fish three. I fished two about a rod lengths apart in front of me to try and anything that's coming through that centre section pick up. And on my right hand rod, I'm sort of fi fishing over towards the pile again, but I've got quite a, oh, it's probably about seven bit, seven and a bit foot zig on. Um, sprayed it with the new Parker Baits bait spray, which is the fruit and nut, smells amazing. Topped it with a few little maggots, sprayed it, put a little bit of foam on there, went out, hit clip, lovely bosh. So, fingers crossed, if anything sort of is sitting in the, the more higher levels of the water and comes up this end, hopefully, just hopefully, I pick it up. But I thought I'll keep it in the loop, and like I said, what I'm going to do is now is just top up, probably, like I said, 45 minutes on. So, I'm going to just top up now three fourth spoms of that slop over the top of the two rods in front of me over them zigs and just keep persistent on that and just hopefully hopefully i can get a bite today i'll see you in a bit well lunch is on the cards but i've only got rice i'm gonna have uh, some rice and i got rice and uh, chicken balls tonight or, or meatballs but a massive shout out to trev trev sergeant good good, good friend of mine and a customer at parker baits and um yeah i've had a bit of a spillage down there mine but he gave me a little treat so in the drop box at Parker Bates. After him picking up his delivery, there was a lovely little parcel of um, free rices in there for me. So I was very much appreciate that, mate. Thank you very much. I'm gonna enjoy that right now. <laughs> Come on the carp. guys you join me in my in my in my bivy and i'm um, sort of laying in the bed now to be honest i'm going to get a bit of a power nap um although i had a good sleep last night there was a couple of occasions obviously two in the morning there was i was in, i was up for an hour then um but it's just nothing out there at the moment the wind's absolutely horrendous and it's actually quite a cold wind so i'm going to take advantage of that now have a sort of an hour's power nap and um hopefully then recharge myself for later on this evening when um, hopefully it cuts off. It's meant to slacken off a little bit of the wind and then I can then obviously lock onto the water a little bit easier but at the moment there's waves. It's just yeah, exactly my point. So I'll uh, see in a little while. That's how windy it is. Uh, Louis just called me and said it's just flipped his rods upside down. That's how windy it is up here at St John's. Absolute madness. Hopefully all his rods are all right. God. Well, it's all going on here. Me and Louis have had our 17th coffee of the day and a tree's just cracked down over there, fell down. We heard the bang. Mental, absolutely mental. So, winds have been savage. I just, like I said, just lost my net. Net went down there. We've had um, the rods cut, fall over. Louis's coffee got splashed out of his mug. <laughs> We've seen it all here today. We really have. But no fish to report, which is a shame. But I just hope, I just hope. Like I said, they move up this end or move through this bit and I can pick something up. Just something, please. So the rain's starting to come in now. The wind's sort of kicked a little bit. I've just punched a zig over here from over here. So literally a swim down now so fingers crossed that bolts into action you join me um, laid down and i um, just watching out the wind's just absolutely relentless out there so i can't really get much footage outside but i thought it'd be the perfect opportunity to go over some of the captures that have happened on parker baits over the duration of the last couple of weeks and what i'm going to do is guys like obviously i talk, touch on them very briefly but just a handful of people that have definitely standed out over the duration or, or, or fish that have standed out over the duration of um the last couple of weeks so first off um lewis Lewis Smith, he's been getting out, he's been, uh, he's one of the Parker Bates ambassadors as well and he's been going out and absolutely smashing up a particular lake local to us and what I will do is guys, obviously you can see on the screen now, 
some of the fish he's had. He had a nice common and one he was after as well. He also caught a pike on our OG fruit and nut bottom bait, which was which was strange and something definitely saying different. Um, also, Corey, he's been getting out in the same same lake, going up there and having several fish overnight. And again, this was falling to the OG fruit and nut. The new 10 millers um, seem to absolutely be ripping up waters at the moment. So he's been doing very well as well. And also, Jay's been getting on in the action, which is a young nipper. Um, he's had a couple of nice ones he goes fishing with Charlie which is my Matt as carp and if you haven't seen him before they well they've both been getting in on the action so what I do is guys again I put these pictures up on the screen now there's numerous numerous other pictures and also uh, catch reports on our social media guys if you aren't already make sure you head over to Parker Bates Instagram uh, etc Facebook and you will see all them captures on there but a lot of people have make, been making a valid point over the duration in the last sort of few vlogs saying you should put up more captures of the bait so that's what I'm doing now guys and it's quite interesting to see um, what what has been coming out on on our bait here at Parker Bates um, it's really satisfying as well when you get the call you know the uh, Lewis likes to give me a, a video call you know and you're there the fisher in the sling you're like yeah no, that, that is what does it for me and that's what makes me so passionate about what I do when I roll and sit in that factory all day and do what I need to do and get it done so that was a very um, brief but a very um, uh, a few of just some of the captures that have happened on Parker Bates over the last couple of weeks guys and like I mentioned and I mentioned it one more time if you haven't already go over to our social medias and you will see more of them but for now I've got to just sit here and just sort of enjoy this weather um, and just keep watching out really and just hopefully um, just hopefully I see a sign of something but I'm moving the zigs around I'm doing everything in my power I can do there's not much more I can really do to be honest so at least I'm nice and warm anyway the only thing I could do with is some Garibaldi's but <laughs> diet Ben go fishing they said be fun oh yeah woo Well, early dinner for me, coffee there for Louis, coffee there for me. Some spicy rice in there, which is my last spicy rice of the session. Chicken and chorizo bites, one pound, so two quid. I've got a banging dinner, but it's quick, so that's what I'm going to do now. I'm not going to video that, guys, so I don't want to bore you. But that is my view out there now. Mr. Windy. Yes! if you can see that guys we're right down the bottom bank there the far end on um st john someone's trying to put a bivy up and it ain't going well must be mad look at that see him tip on my finger well i'm gonna eat my dinner now and have a little bit of a show i think Oh, look at him, mate, isn't it? Oh, no, it's a bit. Yeah. I'll take on the zigs. <laughs> <laughs> right, well, that's the rods redone, guys. Probably around 10 spoms over the top now, and 5 spoms over the top. And as you can see, the wind's savage, but they're out and I'm happy, and I've got a donk on the rod, so. Time to get inside the bivvy, batten down the hatches and enjoy the windy evening. I had a little moment there to myself to be honest. I don't know how much I'm picking up at this because it's windy as hell but I've just that moon is beautiful up there. I've done a little bit of a time lapse there for you. Absolutely beautiful it is. Wind slowly sort of slowing off but I think it's in for 27 miles per hour winds throughout the night but dig up to 50 today so it's been nuts but yeah so you can't see much this side. I'm heading back to Bivy now I'm literally 20 yards away from it but um yeah, time to get some sleep and hopefully I get awake and awoken by a fish. Good night guys and I'll see you in a bit.
Really good morning guys. Um, no fish, nothing through the night. Lou's had nothing, Luke's had nothing. I haven't heard much, although most of what I heard last night was wind. Absolutely savage. I don't think I've seen wind like that since Sanders probably three year ago, two year ago with T, which I know I left. Oh, here he is, look. Here he is, the man himself. Mr. Lukey. All right, mate, how'd you get on? Right, mate. No a few, good. A few liners in the night on an eight foot zig, but that was it, nothing. It's been slow, mate, innit? All oh, them fish have been sat down on that back. Right. Yeah, I don't disagree. I don't disagree, mate. It's been hard, innit? It's been yeah, hard. We should have listened to you when, come on. It is what it is, mate, innit? It's nobody's fault. Nobody's fault. It is what it is, I think. I said, just he said. Had a right session last night. Did he? Did he? He had a few. That wind woke, that wind woke me up, mate, honestly. Yeah. PB muscle. Look at this. That's on a zig as well. Look at that, mate. Multiple muscles. <laughs> That's definitely going to have to be bleeped out. <laughs> <laughs> well, I apologise for that. Just uh, Luke just popped over. He's got he's got off early because last time when he left here, when we were on Brace, it took him six hours to go home. So he's got a four-hour drive now, permitting there's no traffic. But mate, when you're watching this, real pleasure seeing you as always. And thanks again, and a massive shout out to his missus and their cake company because he's dropped me down in these beautiful. Um, biscuity, chocolatey, sexy delights and um, like I said guys I'll put that at the top of the screen now go and check um, his missus uh, brand out if you like or, or cake company unbelievable unbelievable so <sighs> slowly gonna start packing down in between now and the last clip what I've done is, is I've sort of pulled my bar pulled my barrow around and I've got bits in I've already started packing up to be honest with you a little bit I don't like to use the word, but a little bit depressing if I'm honest, a little bit down in the dumps, it's just a real shame, you know, it's just sort of on a bit of a roll the last couple of sessions and now it's gone downhill again, another blank, you know, Christ, and on St John's as well, where in front of us they were sort of doing fish from what Luke said to me over to the left, but they're all on that, all on that end, but not no shows, sat here for two days and I've not seen a show um, and I think a lot of that is due to that ripple on top of the water and it was like waves you know when it's flat calm sometimes you can sort of zone in and clock onto things a little bit better um, and if there's a tiny little bit of white on top of the water you can still pick things up but when it's waves you know I've been I've had the coots playing about with me I'm thinking oh was that a clute was that a fish was that a dark nose? Oh, it was a herring. Oh, it's just, yeah, it's been a nightmare. It's been a nightmare. What a strange session. And like I said, the wind has been absolutely relentless. I've not had wind like this in a long, long time. But I'm going to, like I say, guys, I'm going to slowly start packing down now. I'll definitely keep in the loop before I leave. Apologies, I haven't caught any nosa pigs. Um, but what I am going to do is just before I leave, guys, I'm going to touch on a business that I've been working with, which is called Bank Ready Tackle. Um, which make pre-made rigs and I'm going to touch on that and there's actually going to be a little giveaway in this particular video so when I head up to the car later on um, in that in my car I've got some pre-made I think they're Ronnie rigs and um, this the gentleman that owns the business has obviously come to myself and said you know um, can, can we do something together so we're going to work together and um, yeah it's not something not something I've done much myself but for people that haven't got much time on their hands um, they're doing quick overnighters um, they're already buying things like quarter quarter ones and paying them through the roof room these are bespoke handmade tied rigs made with love um, because I've spoke to the guy and he's very passionate about what he does it's sort of very similar to myself with debate you know you sort of speak to him and he sort of says oh why he does certain things in particular ways and it's it really is, was, a, was a pleasure to speak to him but like I said I'm already saying too much guys I'll briefly touch on that later before I go and there will be a giveaway in this video so stay tuned for that guys and um, yeah I'll catch up with you in a little while <laughs> so uh, me and Lou are standing here and I'm going ah it's rubbish mate I ain't seen nothing, I ain't seen no shows and nothing, and no word of a lie behind me, just over to my left of where I'm fishing. <laughs> Thing just crashed, it was like a proper dump crash, like. So what I've done is with that, got my left hand rod and I've put it on it, and it's on it, on a zig, on it. I mean, I can't physically do no more than that, it's it's on it, it nearly, the lead nearly knocked the thing out, so, well, 
typical isn't it we start, start packing up and you start seeing shows there's another show typical packing down like i said earlier just move that right hand rod over to there because i've just seen another fish show sort of in that middle section there ah oh, so annoying why couldn't you have started showing when we turn up you turn you start showing two hours before we need to leave brilliant cheers anyway positive vibes fingers crossed i can nick one before i leave that'd be lovely i'm gonna squeeze it and go as long as i can but um yeah fingers crossed nearly nearly on the pack down now it's actually coming out quite warm um to be honest very very frustrating that we got to go um life as you know guys know as much as i'd love to be on the bank 24 7 seven days a week it's just not feasible and um yeah i probably wouldn't have a family <laughs> but um the fish that I saw, we saw another fish show right in the corner, went down there to obviously put a bucket in the swim. There was already a bucket in the swim, but that is the joys of linear. See the fish, mate? Yeah, yeah, I saw the fish come out three times. We're thinking, yeah, same story, exactly the same fish. Right, right, right in that far corner. So that's our chances of moving, gone down the drain, but it's been a nice 48 hours. Been alongside Louis and obviously Luke as well. And um, I'm gonna sort, like I said, I'm slowly packing down now and I'll touch base with you when I'm back at the car and I will do that giveaway with you guys. But yeah, really annoyed I couldn't nick one. Really, really annoyed, but we've got another 10, 15 minutes. Um, so there's always a chance. I'll see you in a bit. Wow, that is me back at the car with Louis. Car fully packed and ready to go. As promised guys, what I was gonna say is, is like I said, here I've got one of the Bank Ready's um, tackle boxes, and in here there's about 10 rigs, which are all Ronnie rigs, pre-made, and I'm gonna be giving them away in this video. What I will say is guys, pop over to Bank Ready Tackle and check out them, and like I mentioned earlier, they're an up-and-coming business. They make bespoke handmade rigs to order, and obviously they are in shops as well. They're absolutely booming at the moment, and fair play to them. Real, real sound bunch of lads as well. So go over and check their social medias. But to enter this competition, what you must do is, guys, you must type in Parker Bates Bank Ready. Parker Bates Bank Ready down below. Make sure you subscribe to our channel, and that is how you're gonna get your hands on it. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put them into a random comment generator and pick a winner in a month's time or so so that is how you're going to get your hands on some of these pre-tied ronnie rigs if that's something you're interested in guys as i say get commenting down below and apologies i didn't catch any fish in here but i think it was quite nice to recap on a few people's captures on parker baits i think that was something nice and something we continue doing on the channel but that's it guys without further ado this is the video ending thanks very much for watching um, give us a thumbs up, make sure you comment down below, smash that subscribe button so you don't miss any videos going forward. And I'll see you same time next Sunday, 7.30. Peace out, all the best.